I'm going over some homework questions on module 7 homework. This is for number 14. A pet association claims that the mean annual cost of food for dog and cats are the same. So listen to what they just claimed. They are saying that mean annual cost for dog and cats are the same. So that's our null hypothesis right there. Okay, assuming two things are equal. Okay, so um, which is the correct claim below that the mean annual cost for do of dog? Oh my, sorry. Cost of food for dog and cats are equal. That's the claim being made here, right? And that makes it the null hypothesis. This is the null hypothesis because it is assuming they are the same. When you do um, hypothesis tests to compare two population mean or two population proportion, null is always assuming that they are the same or that there is no difference, okay? The alternative hypothesis um, has to be, you know, the complement of this, right? So we're going to have to say that they are not the same, okay? So that's the null and the alternative hypothesis. Which hypothesis is the claim? The claim is the null, okay? Assuming that they are the same, okay? Let's find critical values, and we're going to have to report two critical values, right? One positive, one negative, and how do we know that? Because if you look at the alternative hypothesis, we're assuming that they are not equal. This is the symbol for two-tailed test. So to area to the left of this critical value, uh, negative critical value, and area to the right of this positive critical value will be the rejection region. So how do we find it? Well, look, alpha level is 0 0.0 to 1, which means we want 99% in the middle and 1% to the right and to the left in the left uh, in the in the two tails. So um, what distribution though? Are we using normal distribution or T distribution? And now that depends whether we know population standard deviations. Look at this part for me. Assume the population variances are not equal. Okay, so do we know what population variance or population standard deviations are yes or no we don't because what they are simply telling us is that population variance and i i say population standard deviation because you know how to go from variance to standard deviation you just take square root so if variance is 25 standard deviation is 5 if variance is 49 Standard deviation is square root of 49 to 7. So when they talk about population variance, they're also talking about population standard deviation. So they are just telling us that, hey, there are two numbers out there and they are not equal. But nowhere in this sentence, they're telling us what they are. So we do not know population standard deviation. Therefore, you will find these critical values on t-distribution. So open up stack crunch because I'm going to go open up t-calculator stat calculator and t and what i want is i'm going to go to between because i want 99 percent in the middle i want 99 percent in the middle and how did i get that because one minus this alpha one minus 0 0.01 is 99 percent okay now what's the degrees of freedom now degrees of freedom we have to be careful for these two sample tests okay um if the sample sizes are different like this case dog there are 15 dogs cats there are nine dogs what you do is you go with the smaller sample size minus one so 15 and nine nine is smaller so nine minus one is eight okay all right and that's all i have to do to find critical values so anything out of these numbers okay if it's in that red area it's it's not in the rejection area but if it's on the other side like the right tail and the left tail so what are the critical values here it is um this number comma the negative of that number that's how you can find critical values so um the next part is asking us to select the correct rejection regions anything greater than that or anything smaller than that negative number so t less than negative of that critical value and t greater than positive of that critical value okay so those are the rejection region so now we're going to have to find the critical the standardized test statistic for this dog and this cat uh, sample so in order for me to do that i'll go ahead and just use t stat okay stat t stat 
and I have two samples. And you know, we already talked about why we are going with T-STAT instead of Z-STAT, right? T-STAT because we do not know population standard deviation. Click on summary, and all you have to do is just type in everything in there. Sample mean for dogs is 222. Sample standard deviation is 38. Sample size is 15. Sample mean is 187. Sample standard deviation is 34. And sample size is 9. And now here's the important part that we have to be careful. Should you click on pull variances? Yes or no? Hmm. Now you have to pull variances if population standard deviation or population variances are assumed to be equal. But look, they said assume they are not equal. So do not click on pull variance for this question. You have to click on pull variance if they said they are assumed to be equal. Okay, now let's go ahead and set the hypothesis. Well, they are the same for null, then mu1 minus mu2 will be zero because there's no difference. The two things are the same, right? Um, the two-sided test, the symbol has to be does not equal to for the alternative. So everything is just, you know, I'm just going to go with the default setting. Okay. Oh, I almost clicked on pool variance by mistake. I shouldn't do that. If I do that, uh, the standardized test statistic and uh, p-value will come out wrong. So here it is. The t-stat is 2.3. 3, 4, but if I round that up to three decimal places, I'll have to round that up to 2.335. Okay, now compare this to the critical values. Okay, um, 2.335 is not bigger than positive 3.355. It's actually in between this negative and this positive number. So does it fall in the rejection region? No, it's not. It's in between them. And when it's between them, it's like well, not this one. It's in that red area, right? We have two stack control point. Where's the other one? I can't find it. But because it's not in the rejection region, we have to tell them that we failed to reject. We failed to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Now, what does that mean back in the context of the problem? Okay, we have to be able to, able to translate this, right? At 1% significance level. Now, this part is easy. Whenever you fail to reject, you have no evidence. But whenever you fail to reject, um, you have to say there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. And the claim was the null, so they awarded it for us already. So this is good. And that is how you can solve question number 14 on module seven homework.